Okay, 7.47 now on breakfast. It's time for Newswatch, presented by Raymond Snoddy. This week the programme looks at the creeping Americanisation of language used in news and asks what the coverage of the Cumbria floods tells us about the state of local television. Welcome to News Watch. Later in the programme, find out why a Catholic priest from Barnsley is getting dressed up in a poncho and a cowboy hat and what he's complaining about. First, over the... Now, have you ever had the feeling you're living in a foreign country? Do you grimace every time someone tells you to have a nice day? Several of our viewers clearly do, among them Jerry Smith from North London, who wrote to us after the shooting at a US military base earlier this month. Could the BBC please not use terrible Americanisms like lockdown? Or at least, if you have to use them, can you not put them in inverted commas? The expression is horrible. And what does it actually mean? This is not the US. It is the UK. Sorry for the rant. No sweat, Jerry. Or rather, that's all right. You're not alone. Roy Stevenson had this question. Would it be possible to insert the good old-fashioned English word before into news, and especially sports bulletins, instead of the buzzwords of the moment, ahead of, as in ahead of next week's game or ahead of next week's G20 meeting. BBC News is fast becoming CNN. Well, one of those who got in touch with us was a Catholic priest from Wombwell near Barnsley. So we strapped on our spurs, saddled up the Newswatch horse and moseyed on over to South Yorkshire to meet him. My name is Father John Dane, and I'm a regular viewer of BBC News. But I'm getting somewhat confused by certain words and phrases used by your reporters which appear to be of American origin, especially those inspired by sports seldom played this side of the Atlantic. For instance, what on earth does this mean? The mayor-elect stepped up to the plate today, taking London for the Conservatives. Stepping up to the plate? What does stepping up to the plate mean? I'm not even a fan of rounders, let alone baseball, so I've only a hazy knowledge. Now, does it mean something like rising to the challenge? If it does, then why don't you say so? And you know, it's not the only American sporting terminology I'm unfamiliar with. How much do you think, give us a ballpark figure, and how long before the couple can move back in here? From a time scale. Well, I'm not familiar with ballparks or with sidewalks for that matter. In fact, if I were to ask the BBC for directions, I suspect I'd be in all manner of trouble. Jump in your station wagon, they might say. Take the freeway downtown. You'll find the parking lot opposite the gas station. Or they might even suggest taking the railroad. Well, being British, that's all gibberish to me. But here I am at the railway station, not the train station, and I'm buying a return ticket, thank you very much, and not a round-trip ticket, because I'm not planning on going on the circle line. The flip side of that, of course, is that the Tories will now increasingly be expected to spell out what they would do in pounds. For those of you needing translation, the flip side is the reverse side. And this is a lift and not an elevator, and this is cutlery and not silverware. <sighs> you know, I wanted chips and they brought me fries. I wanted a serviette and they gave me a napkin. Look, I don't want to throw a spanner or a wrench into the works and imply that all this Americana is all garbage or trash, but I still expect to have my news delivered to me in good old British English. I don't want to turn on the telly and see the news anchor talking to me about kerosene, trucks or movies. So sort it out, BBC. It's just not cricket. Viewer, Father John Dane there. Thanks for all your comments this week. We're still keen to hear any questions or points you'd like put to the chairman of the BBC Trust, Sir Michael Lyons, whom I'm interviewing in a few weeks' time. Or indeed, any views on BBC News and current affairs. You can call us on 0370 010 6676 or email newswatch at bbc.co.uk. 
Thanks for watching. You can be making our news next week.